Any professional engineer who's used Cubase will rave about the multi-band compressor. It's been around for quite some time and it keeps getting updated and it gets better. The multi-band compressor has four separate bands of compression and we can use this to do a number of different things. One of the most popular uses for the multi-band compressor is to compress specific bands. And this would usually be the case over something like a master track or even over a drum sample, which has been mixed into a stereo file. So a few of the things that we can do with a multi-band compressor is change the frequency bands. So we've got four bands and we can use the handles in between to widen and narrow these bands. We can adjust the output volume and we can use a live view mode, which will mean that the software or the plugin will look ahead, which also increases latency. We can bypass individual bands and we can solo individual bands to hear what's going on inside. In terms of what we can do with the actual bands itself, well, it's fairly similar to a traditional compressor. We've got a threshold, so we set the threshold and tell the compressor where we want it to kick in. The ratio says how much we can press. And down the bottom, we've got an attack and release parameter. So we can have a very quick attack and we can choose our release and we can also specify to have the software use an auto release. There's a number of ways we can operate the multiband compressor. At the moment, I'm using my mouse and I'm simply picking up on the parameters down the bottom. And as I do so, I see a change in the gain reduction and also in the metering. But I obviously need to be careful that I'm not clipping out the channel or my master channel on the mixer itself. So that's always something to bear in mind when you're controlling the output. Now the other way to control the parameters is to simply pick up on the handles using the mouse. So everywhere you see one of these little dots, it means you can pick up on it and adjust something. Now of course there's plenty of different presets which come with the multiband compressor. Some of these presets are for very specific instruments or purposes, so you can get some idea of just how useful the multiband compressor is. Another great use for a multiband compressor is to put it over a send channel, which has something like a reverb or a delay on it. So you can get in and compress very specific frequency bands, which is going to give you a very different reverb sound. So for instance, if you wanted to really tighten up and compress the lower end on a reverb, then you can use the multiband compressor to do this. The cool thing about a multiband compressor, and this is what makes it different from an EQ, is we're actually saying to the multiband compressor, hey, within this very specific frequency range, we want to limit the difference between the softest and the loudest parts of this specific track. So rather than say with an EQ where we're basically lowering the volume, what we're doing is almost squashing it and then we've got the ability to raise the volume. So we can even raise that part even louder. So it doesn't actually need to be softer in the mix, it's just gonna limit the dynamic range. At the moment, I've got this multi-band compressor over the top of my master channel, which, like I said earlier, is one of the most popular uses for the multi-band compressor. And once again, there's stacks of different presets for different genres to help you get on your way. Hey, thanks for taking the time to stop by and check out this video. Please like the video if you've learned something, leave us comments if you're using the multi-band compressor, and subscribe to the Cubase YouTube channel for plenty more videos just like this. I'll see you later.